So in this episode, we're taking a deep dive into Power Windows. I use Power Windows all the time. I'm gonna share with you my tips and tricks that I've built up over the years. I'm gonna teach you the basics. I'm gonna show you some more advanced techniques. And then I'm gonna show you a Netflix show that I graded. I've got the actual grade here. I'm gonna show you exactly what I did to relight the scene. So let's go and take a look. So we're in the color page. I've got three clips ready to go to show you everything I can about Power Windows. Now this first one, I'm gonna show you the very basics. So if you do know a fair bit about Power Windows and you wanna look at how I do it with my broadcast work, use the timestamps below and just jump ahead a little bit. But this is for absolute beginners. All right, we've got a shot here. I've got a few nodes on here. I've done some very basic color management. I've got episodes on color management. I'll put links to that in the description, but I've basically done a basic grade on this shot. Now, what I'm gonna do is go to an empty node here and I'm gonna start putting some power windows on it. You'll find power windows down in this section here and this one here is the power window icon and you can select various different types. So you've got a linear one here, you've got a circle one, you've got a polygon shape here, you've got a curve where you can draw your own and this bottom one is for gradients. So I'm gonna slowly use each of these throughout this episode. Let's see what it's actually doing first. So if I select a circle power window here, all right, what it's done is drawn up a preset shape and the green area here is the physical shape that it is. You can change that obviously by just pulling these handles. Okay, I can make that as small, large as, as I want. And the yellow inside and outside is softness. Okay, so let's start off without much softness. I'm gonna put that over that taxi. By the way, mine are green and yellow because in my preferences here, I've changed the default color to be high visibility power window outlines. That's in user and color. I do that because it's easier for you to see on YouTube what I'm doing. All right, so we've got the shape, but nothing's happening. What is actually going on? So what I wanna do is brighten this taxi up. So I'm gonna use offset here, and I'm just gonna increase brightness. And I'm gonna go quite extreme, but you see what's happening is it's only happening inside that window. The window is creating a secondary grade. We're, we're isolating a section of video to actually do the grade on. Now, you can actually invert that. If I click here, I can actually do the opposite. So I'm actually now, the taxi stayed as it was, and I've graded the outside of that window. So you can choose inside or outside the window. So it's really effective. All right, that's obviously quite extreme. So let's just pull that back a little bit. Now, if I want to see what that looks like, you can click here and just switch that off. And I can now switch this node on and off. If I just press the little number six here, or I can press Command D on my keyboard, I can see what's happening with that window. One of the first things that is good to know with Power Windows is be subtle, okay? So I can see the outline of that, so that's not a very good grade. So we've got two options here. What we could do is go to our softness tool and just increase the softness. Now I can't see the outline shape, so what you need to do is just switch that back on. Go to Power Window here, and I can now see the shape. And I can move that around, you can do whatever you want with it. All right, so that's just using the circle power window. What I wanna do now is, let's get rid of that one. You can switch it on and off like this. Okay, you can even name them. If I click on here, I could say taxi. So let me quickly just show you the other ones. I don't use this one a lot, but it's basically a linear tool. So it's already got a softness on it and you can control the individual edges softness independently. All right, the next one down here is a linear tool. Now this, looks like it hasn't got softness on it, but it has, but it's inside and outside, so it's a bit more global. And uh, let me just show you if I do something extreme in there. I'll just show you that that is, in fact, softening off. I hope you can see that. Yeah, you should be able to see that on YouTube. This one is one that I use a lot. I tend to use the circle one and this one, which is a curve tool. And this allows me to get a much more accurate shape. So I can now draw around this taxi. You see, I'm doing it quite loose. I'm not being too tight. I tend to put more points on than I need. It's, I think it's because I'm using a pen and tablet. Um, you don't need to put as many as that on there, but as long as they join up, it will get, complete the shape. I'm gonna put a little bit of outside softness on there and a little bit of inside softness. One thing to be careful of is if you make your angles too tight, what can happen is you can go inside out with your softness. So just be careful of that. It doesn't look pretty. So I'm gonna undo that. And now if I increase that offset, there we go, we pop in the taxi, Again, I'm just doing this for effect to show you. I'm not saying that that's a good grade. Or I can do the inverse of that by clicking on there. So that's what these are doing. This one here, by the way, this is a gradient. So if I just click on here, I don't use this to be honest, but this gives you a gradient tool and you can position where the gradient starts and how the longer this line is, the softer that gradient appears. Okay, so it's like that. And another trick you can do, if I click here and 
do something like so in here. But let's say you want to make a bit more of a point in here. You don't want it to be a complete circle. Instead of getting rid of it and going to the curve tool, what you can actually do is click here and say convert to Bezier. And now what I can do is add extra points in here. And then you can use your inside and outside softness independently. So that's another little trick. So that's one example of where a window works, but this window is static now. Okay, we've got quite a lot going on in this scene. Let me show you what actually happened in this. This is a commercial I graded years ago. And as we move through this scene, you'll see that this character here has a red tail on their coat. This was for the branding. So the branding of the commercial that we did is this red. And they thought it'd be nice to have the red pillar box in here and red inner coats, but it actually became a little bit distracting when she walked down the street. So what we did was change the hue of it. Now I'm gonna show you a really good technique with power windows here. Let's take this coat here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select it with, let's use a curve. I'm gonna go up to here. I'm gonna say hue versus hue. I'm gonna select that red and I'm just gonna cycle through, and we actually made it blue, so let me just make it actually blue. I'm gonna stretch that out a little bit so it's a bit nicer. It wasn't quite as strong blue as that, something more like that. There we go, that's, that's exactly what it was. Now, the issue we've got here is it's changed the taxi and the pillar box. So what's good to do here is to use a power window. So I'm gonna to go to my window here. I've got a whole episode on how to do everything that I'm about to show you as well. I'll put a link to that in the description, but effectively I'm gonna draw a window around her and track it. So we isolate just this section to be blue. So I'm gonna take my little curve here. There's the preset shape from before. Now what I could do is ignore that one. We can actually go up here and add a new one. You can have as many of these as you like. So I'm gonna add a new curve that's appearing here. I'm just gonna draw, instead of rebuilding that one, it's easy for me to just do this. I'm just gonna draw loosely around that shape. And you see what's happening now, because we're on inside and not outside, we've isolated that whole huge shift that we did for the whole image is now isolated within this power window. And what I'm gonna do is track this. Because I've got a window live, all you've got to do is go into the tracker, okay, and literally just press track. So I'm gonna track forwards and backwards, and it's done. So if we just play that through, i just put my loop on and she comes and there we've got a perfect track of that coat. Now in this episode that I'm going to put a link to, I show you how to fix bad tracking, how to use windows more advanced in tracking. So check that one out if you haven't seen it already. So before we move on to the full relighting that I'm going to show you on the actual broadcast job that I worked on, let's just take a quick look at this shot here. I've done some basic color management on this again. This is shot on a black magic camera. And what I'm using here is my fixed no tree. This is freely available. There's a link in the description. You can download this and use it for free. And I've got an episode on how I use use this no tree. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. And I've done the color management on here and I've done some very basic color grading on here as well. Now in reality on my fixed no tree, my power windows go in some parallels down here. And the reason they go in parallels is so that I'm blending them together and they're not, each power window is not then feeding the next power window. So it's nice to have them in parallels. It's a good rule to follow. So if you're enjoying this episode so far, drop me a comment and let me know what you'd like to see in future episodes. Also think about subscribing if you haven't done so already. I don't ask very often. I do work hard to get these episodes as good as I can for you. And I would love it if you hit the like button for me. All right, let's take a look at what we're gonna do on this one. Now, what often gets done and a quite a common technique is to use power windows to make a vignette. So let me show you exactly how to do that. If you take a power window here, we're gonna take a circle power window. And the first thing we do is soften off the edges. You want really, really soft edges on this. I'm gonna bring that up to here. Sometimes I don't always have the vignettes at in the middle, but what I'd like to use for mine, I'm gonna invert it obviously, or else it's gonna grade inside that shape. But I use two different methods of doing it. The first one is just using gamma in the primary wheels. So if I just bring that down, I'm going quite extreme here, but you can see we're getting that really nice sort of vignetting feel on the edge. Or the other trick that I use is I go to HDR and I just bring down exposure slightly. Okay, you've got to be careful with this one because you are actually affecting your blacks and whites as well. So I tend to use gamma more than I use global offset, but it would depend on the shot. So that's how you get a basic vignette. Now what you can do is then click on here and you can save that as a new preset and I'm gonna call that vignette. Or you could save it as a shared node or you could save it as a still in your gallery, but I like to put it in there. Now, if I wanted to get that and put it on this shot, I can select this shot here and 
I can click on here and say vignette and there it is. There's the shape ready for me to go. So that's a really good tip as well. So let's take a look at a real world example. I want to show you an actual job that I worked on and show you just how I use power windows and how subtle they can be. But I'm going to show you what a huge difference they really make. So this shot here, this is from a Netflix show and this is the actual grade. So you see it's very similar to my fixed node tree that you download, but it's got a little bit more going on in it. So it's just an extension of that. So this is the actual finished shot. I've got various things going on here. We've got our color balance going on here. There's a bit of temperature control. There's various things, but you see here, I've got a whole section of windows. Now this started life as this. This is in Rec 709. There's no point in me showing you log. Well, here is the log. This is Rec 709. And then we came to this. This is the grade, but without any power window. So I want to show you exactly how I've used them. I'm going to do this. I'm going to rebuild it from scratch. So this shot is taken from a documentary that is factual crime. And we thought that the scene here just looks a little bit too bright for the subject that's actually being spoken about. So the director decided that he wanted the background to be set back a little bit. So I've got a node here called background. And let me show you traditionally how this would be done. I'm going to go in to here. I'm going to do a shape. Now, what I need to do is get outside of the image here. So what I'm going to do is go up to here. I'm just going to roll this back to be about 75%. I've actually got this mapped to a wheel that sits on my Zensi Labs tablet and pen. So that's really useful. I can just grab that at any point. So what I do is if we want to make her pop and the background darker, what I would do traditionally is just draw a nice loose shape around her. And add plenty of softness, of course as I always do, play, always plenty of softness. I don't think I've ever done a power window without softness on it, unless even if I'm drawing around a laptop screen, I'd even have a couple of pixels. And then what we do is invert that. And then I'm just going to take my exposure here and my HDR. And I'm just going to draw that back slightly. So it looks something like that. Now let's just go and switch that window off. In fact, I don't need to do that here because I've got other nodes here with nothing on. I can just literally switch on another node. And you see that looks pretty good. But the problem I've got, in fact, if I just highlight that, you can see if I enable and disable. But the problem I've got is you can see this edging and I want they wanted it quite dark back. So this is not going to work in that instance. This is an example of when not to use a power window, but I still want that effect to happen. Now with version 20, we've got this fantastic magic mask. I actually use magic mask on the original one, but that wasn't on version 20. So I'm going to get rid of the power window in this instance. And the reason I'm putting this on is because I need to show you other things that I'm doing with the power windows that might explain why they're in parallel as well. So I'm going to take my background. What we did was we used the magic mask here. I'm going to get to better mode. I'm going to do this properly. I'm going to do it exactly how I would do it in broadcast situation. And what we do is highlight her. Now, the reason I can't use the depth control is because this cushion and this armchair here are on the same depth as her. So I'd have to use maybe depth map in a window, but I find it easier to just go straight for the magic mask. So if I put my highlight tool on up here, you can see what's going on. It's done a fantastic job of getting her exactly in there. So what we can do now is take that off. Let's invert it because I don't want her to be affected. And we're going to do that exact same movement. It's going to bring down my exposure and drop it down something like that. I think we went to, I can't remember the exact number we went to, but it was something around about there. Now that's looking great. She's really popping in there, but it looks a bit weird. She looks still a bit too lit. In fact, if anything, that's probably a bit strong. Let's just knock it back a little bit. There we go. Right. So she's now looking good. She's, we've got that background set, but it's starting to look a bit dull now. The next thing I did was click on here and this area is, it's just a bit dead. There's nothing really going on there. Here we've got a nice practical, we've got some photos, we've got the chairs, but there's not a lot actually going on on here. So what I decided to do was take a power window and I did a circle power window on it just for speed, lots of softness and pulled it out like this. But what I did was make it quite long. In fact, I made it more than that even. If I just change my aspect, something like that. And this side, you literally couldn't see it. So it did something like that. I'm going to invert it and I'm going to bring down gamma here. And we're just dropping that side down. So you see what's happening. If I switch that on and off, we're just dropping that side, but nothing over here has been affected. So that's a really good way of doing it. I could have just done that with a window drawn, something like this, but I quite like using circle power windows. All right. The next thing I noticed, if we click on this next node, 
is that this lamp here, so, so far what we've got, if I just show you the windows we've done so far, we're dropping that background down, we've dropped the left side down even more, but this lamp here is getting affected by that as well. So let's just adjust that. What I do is another little circle power window. And you see how so subtle I'm being with all these. I'm gonna bring that down and we're gonna just put that over here. I'm gonna add a little bit more softness to it. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is just bring up the exposure on that. Just slightly, not, I mean, look how little I'm bringing it up. Okay, this is how you're doing it when you're doing it for real broadcast. You don't want anyone to see these windows. That's the key of getting it right. I'm then gonna bring up my saturation just a little bit. Okay, I just wanna see now how much of a difference that's made. So, it's, so I'm not changing the lights coming out of it. I'm not making it look silly, but what I'm doing is just giving it a little bit of an edge. So we've now got background, left side, and that practical lamp being lifted. Okay, so that's all great, but what I felt was missing now, if I just click on here, is the room starts to look a little bit flat. So she's quite lit still, because if you remember, the room is actually lit like this, but it's starting to look a bit flat. So what I did was do a final power window. I'm just gonna draw it in and I just need to come out a little bit more of this. And I'm gonna enhance the lights coming in through this window. So I'm gonna do something like this. Again, I don't need to draw as many points as this. It's just a habit that I do from many, many years of doing this. Uh, I've not quite joined the dots up there. There you go, now they're joined. Okay, so now I've plenty of outside softness. I really can't stress that enough on this. Okay, I just need to be careful there that I don't go inside out. All right, something like that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my tool here. I'm gonna add a little bit of gamma. Let's add a bit more, something like that. So we're still getting the background looking dark, but we've got just a little bit more life coming into it. All right, let's go something like that. Now the issue I've got here is, if I just take that window off, is it doesn't look right because, if I Command D again, because the light is actually coming in front of it. I'm gonna, do you know what? I'm gonna add a bit more into this just to exaggerate it, just so you can see what's going on. And let's put that back to best fit. But oh, that's a bit too strong. Sorry, I can't leave it like that. Yeah. Um, so there's the light coming in. Now what we need to do is block her from that light being affected through that window. All right, again, we could use depth map here, but because I've already magic masked her, which is gonna track all her movements, she lifts her hands up soon, I can take the magic mask that I did and I can take the feed, the key from it in to this window shot. And what happens now is you see, we've got the light coming in through the window, but it's all going behind her. So that is now a convincing effect. So let's take a look at all four of those lights together. Now, when you're doing this amount of relighting work, you really wanna play the clip back, especially as we've used Magic Mask. Now, on the actual grade, I checked that render first, just to check that I wasn't getting into trouble, but let's play this clip back. So on the left-hand side, you've got the full grade, but without any of the power window work. And the right-hand side is all that work that we did on those four power windows. So we've got our base shot, then we darken the background, darken the left-hand side, lifted up that practical light, and then we added that window light, but keeping our subject blocked. And that has dramatically changed that scene. So that is a true real-world example. You can see how subtle I am with those power windows. This is a really good practical example of how that works. Now, I've had a few comments recently in my other episodes just saying, where are you? Why are you not recording? Why have you posted so infrequently? This year has been particularly busy, but I am a real working colorist. This is my day job is as a broadcast colorist. That's how I can give you insights like this. These are real world examples. I am back on YouTube now. I intend to get another episode out next week. So I am doing a little window where I'm gonna get as many out as I can, but I try my best, okay? But I am a real full-time colorist. That is my job. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, think about subscribing as well. It's really good for me to see that. I know most of you don't subscribe. I get it, but I really do appreciate it, especially when I'm not posting as much as I want to. Just give me a bit of encouragement. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode.